nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Hey there folks, welcome to American Farmer, welcome to Wacoville, Nebraska, home to the finest 300 souls you'll ever meet. American Farmer will follow me, your host Raz, don't ask how I got the name, on our multi-generation farm in southeastern Nebraska. Here we are driving through the quaint little village of Wacoville, an estimated population of 300. Town. Great little town. Right now, I want to say a big thank you to WFRM and sponsor for today's episode, York County Growers Association. Thank you guys very much for helping me get the show put together. So, a little bit about the farm. Again, this is a multi generation farm. We've been here. Uh, in Nebraska, my family has since the Homestead Act of 1862. We currently farm and manage 2,200 acres of primarily corn and soybean land. We also do some custom farm work and storage for other farmers in the area. Here's one of our, uh, of our fields here on the left. We actually got rained out, uh, so I thought today would be a good episode to introduce myself good time to introduce myself and uh, maybe do a little farm tour show the equipment we use but uh, we were able to get that that, that field in uh, here's our fields on the right that's one of our soybean fields here's the main yard and this has actually been uh, this is the original homesteading site my family settled back in the late 1800s the old house is gone and uh, this is Pretty much all farm work. Most of us live in town. Quite a few of us to work. Uh, grandfather, he uh, still comes down. Dad, brother, a lot of us here still uh, still putting in work here on the on the main farm. On the farm. Like I said, we got rained out. Uh, it's Weather has not cooperated all year long. It's been really, really wet. And uh, we were able to get the corn in, um, start getting it dried down. But uh, we still have soybeans to do and uh, still got, got a lot of corn to do. I'm, I'm hoping we can get all this in. Uh, we're hoping the clouds will go away and the fields will dry out a little bit because uh, the mud is, is not, not liking our equipment. Uh, we'll get started with the farm tour. Here's our little uh, <laughs> little farm office. That's an old container that we converted into a farm office right there. Uh, this beast is our 30 horsepower uh, 2032R. That's what that's our mower, pretty much uh, mow. We might pull some stuff around with it, uh, but very rarely. Uh, we just usually just mow with it. Mo bush hog, things of that nature. There's the old pickup truck. That's uh, my grandfather's. And uh, now is mine. Actually had a 
did quite a bit of work to it. Um, but that's my work truck. This is a fairly new addition for us. This is a Thunder Creek. Um, it's a mobile fuel uh, tank, pump. A great piece of equipment. We were able to demo uh, something like this a couple years back. And uh, we were really, really impressed with it. Really happy with it. Our old... Uh, we, we didn't have a mobile fuel option at the time. So anytime we were running low, we had to come back here and actually fill up at the yard. Um, which really, really ampered our ability to keep keep equipment moving when it needed to be moving. So this is really, really nice to have. Let's see. We'll go. Let's go this way. Oh, while we're here, though, take a look at um, our most expensive piece of equipment here. This is our uh, 2018 John Deere S780. This is uh, our most most recent, recent purchase. Dad must have had it out. He was working on something with the header and uh, I don't know where he went. Must be out for lunch. It was around lunchtime, so that's probably where he went. But uh, There's our S780. That's old number two. Uh, I'll show you a number one here just shortly and this is attached to our 716 C this is our 16 row horn header uh, we have our stock stompers there it's kind of got them up if you folks don't know what they are those actually go down and uh, put pressure on the stocks uh, after after the corn's been picked but uh, we'll, we'll talk about that later in another video when we actually do some harvesting that's what I'm hoping to do after this one is uh, maybe next week we'll, we'll look at some harvesting if we can get out in the field. Here is our John Deere 4240. This is a 1981, I believe. Yep, 1981 uh, 4240. Great little yard tractor. Uh, does all the chores around the yard. Uh, this is also what we use for our augers when we're filling the grain bins over there that aren't attached to the leg. Um, so that's what we use there. So we have uh, a couple Orthman side dressers. Those get attached to uh, some 1700 gallon tanks that, uh, not 1700 gallons. I can't remember how big the tanks are, <laughs> but uh, they get attached to some tanks and that's what we use for side dressing corn. And uh, if you folks, again, don't know what side dressing is, we will talk about that later in another episode. But pretty much it's a way to put fertilizer uh, directly in the ground next to the crop instead of spraying it onto the crop. So. All right, got this shed. This is, uh, this is usually where we keep our uh, trailer shed. Here is our 2016 Kenworth T880. That's our farm truck. So we do all the hauling with and uh, out of the field. That's what we pull the big trailers with. My brother actually has, has a Freightliner uh, truck, but he uh, he also uses that for some hauling. Um, but he'll bring that to the farm and uh, help us out with it too. Here is our uh, um, Olic Illuminator. Uh, this is our grain trailer that we use. Uh, we used to have belly dump. We used to keep belly dump trailers, but the way um, both of the elevators in this area, they, they're they really not set up for belly dumps. They're, they're fairly old, and uh, they haven't upgraded for pull-through unloading, so most of them are uh, back at dumps, so that's why we went with this one. It's a, it's a great um, belt trailer. By belt trailer, I mean there's a belt that rides along the bottom of the trailer that pushes the grain out the back, so it doesn't have to lift up in the air. Really, really handy. Really nice to have. Here is our seed tender. This is a Meridian uh, seed trailer that we use. We're really lucky with our location. There's a Monsanto uh, place east of us, and then there's a big Pioneer distribution uh south of town and it's really nice uh, we actually can go buy our seed in bulk and save on freight uh, really really nice uh, being close to both of those the 
then we have our um, Wilson Field Trailer. This is uh, this is where we keep our chemicals, uh, fertilizers, herbicides, any other liquid treatments that we need to do. There's uh, some pellet stuff there. Kind of got left on the trailer. Uh, but yeah, we, we keep that in the field when we're running the sprayer and the side dressers. And it's really nice to have uh, close proximity. Again, 2,200 acres, you can get pretty good distance away from the main yard. And having this close by really helps with efficiency. So, uh, here is another newer piece of equipment. That's a new leader. This is a spreader. This is what we throw uh, when we're not using liquid application. If we uh, we need to throw a pellet, solid, urea, any of that stuff down, uh, we have the nice new leader. This is only a couple years old. Really, really nice. It's got the big floaters on it. I'm really happy with it. Over here to the shed. These are our Salford vertical tillage implements. Um, so we use in the spring for spring tillage. We, we do. Uh, we don't do any tillage in the fall, uh, and that's to help with ground erosion and also um, help keep moisture in the ground over the winter and in the early spring as snow melts. So we just do the vertical tillage. A lot of folks do. Um, strip till in the area we just haven't got to to that yet we haven't got to the equipment to do strip till hoping to do that in the future right now we still just do uh, the vertical tillage all right in the big shed here this is our john deere db90 24 row planter uh, corn soybean planter and then liquid tank there and then this is our newest this is our first season using this, our very first season. This is a Great Plains 24 row planter, again with the big liquid tank behind it. Um, really nice thing about this and the reason why we got into this is, like I said earlier, we've been doing some grain farming. Uh, I don't know if I said it earlier, but we've been doing some uh, cereal grains, uh, specifically for Monsanto. Yeah, but uh, with the yields we've been having, we, we may explore getting into more of the cereal grains because they've been doing really well in the area and we've been really happy with the yield. And uh, that's why we, we purchased this. Uh, you normally we're a John Deere farm. Uh, we got a really nice deal with this and we're really happy with the demo of the Great Plains. The nice thing about this is we can turn uh, these rows off so when we're just doing corn and soybeans we just use one of these and then when it's time to uh to plant cereal grains we actually can turn all of these planter heads on which is really really handy definitely a, definitely a nice feature that's why we went with it again uh, this is, was our very first season using this I'm really really happy um the stands everything looks great uh, the, the wheat that we planted did really well. Uh, we're really happy with the yield on it and uh, couldn't be happier with that purchase. Here is the old workhorse. This is what I grew up in. This is our John Deere 8970. This is a 1995 8970. That'd be about right, yeah. 95, yep, because uh, I was in high school when we bought this brand new. It's been a long time. Um, so this is our John Deere 8970, a 400 horsepower articulated tractor. Uh, this is one of our main workhorses and was the main workhorse for years until we got our new 8400R. Um, great tractor, love keeping it around. And uh, I know someday it'll go away and that makes me sad, but really happy with it. Here is our John Deere 4045 sprayer. This is a 120 foot sprayer does uh infield do about 20 miles an hour we can cover a lot of acreage with this a lot a lot of acreage and which is really 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 nice to have it's the 84 r take a look at a couple of our head this is a 
45 foot Draper header that we use for the S780 over there. And then over here we have a 25 foot uh, auger head. And what I mean by auger and uh, let me see if I can get in there and look. Jump up. There you go. Um, you can see this is uh, this auger pulls the, the material into the feeder house there. Um, where on the draper head it's belt driven. Get out of here without cutting my head off. All right. On the draper head, this is um, it's belt driven. So the belts pull the material in to the feeder house. Um, both of them have their advantages and disadvantages. Most of our your larger headers, uh, 45 feet and larger in the Draper style, just for weight, uh, weight management, uh, things of that nature. Those are our, our uh, liquid tanks for the side dressers. There's the Montag liquid tanks. The handy. There's our little new Holland skid steer. There's no no farm can run without a skid steer. That's just some extra storage. Uh, that's so it looks like yeah. That's our uh, we have some extra chemical left over from from the season. So it's really nice. It should keep. Should be all right. You can see we got we have three sheds. One, two, three. There. Grain storage, we'll get to that near. This is our 9660 STS. We've had this for a pretty good while now. This is a 2007, 2007 9660 STS. Uh, we call it number one. So you're in it, you're number one. It's a smaller harvester than that one. A uh, little out, getting, getting to be outdated. Still runs great. And um, we haven't had any issues out of it, so we're going to keep it on the farm uh, just because the prohibitive costs of new harvesters. This thing is it's paid for itself, and we're really happy with it. Uh, here you can see it's hooked to a new 12-row new, uh, corn header, uh, which is just a little brother to the 16-row. It's a 612C, pretty much all the same standard features as the, the other one. Talked about the... 40 yeah tell you oh there's one of our old farm king augers we don't use that one much anymore um, of course it's like anything you don't throw it away because you never know when you might need it or if you need parts off of it or anything of that nature jump in the hinder we'll drive the rest of the way my legs are tired <laughs> Here is our main workhorse on this farm. That is our John Deere 8400R. This thing is uh, 2017. We haven't had it very long. Super happy with this tractor. Amazing. Couldn't ask for a better vehicle, in my, my opinion. But then again, I grew up driving the John Deere. Uh, that's, that's all I've ever really used. And uh, all I've ever really needed. John Deere stuff, so there's the 8400R. Here's our new uh, J&M 1400 bushel auger wagon. And uh, you can see we, we have everything kind of out because we were in the middle of harvesting and then got rained out. So it's just waiting on the fields to dry. That's our little Brant auger. That's what we use to uh, unload these Brock bins. They're there. We, uh, we don't use the Brock bins much can't see that. Let me uh, cut this off here. Uh, that one there, that's where the wheat's at right now that we took out of the field. Right there in the Brock bin. Uh, we keep it close to the road. Uh, we actually don't get to keep all of the wheat that we harvest. Some of it goes back to Monsanto testing purposes and things of that nature. But uh, that's where we keep it. These Brocks are usually for storage for other farmers. Um, these are our, our, our older bins. We don't use them as much as uh, the other stuff because we have the everything connected to the leg over there. Uh, we can use that for overflow for beans, um, but it's very rare that we actually get into those. Those most of the time are for other farmers to use. They'll lease those out. Got a couple header trailers here. This is the John Deere 8410. Again, uh, another, another great tractor we've had for 
pretty good while. This is a 2001 8410. I think it's 270 horsepower tractor. Um, used to be able to pull most of the implements we have, and now uh, a lot of this stuff's a little bit too big for the John Deere. But uh, we use it for side dressing, um, pulling stuff around. Um, we'll pull the grain cart. It's a great tractor to have around. Still runs great. Really happy with it. So, get around. There's another one in the fields. Pretty much, as far as the eye can see, we manage. There's a pig farm there where the trees are at. Monsanto is way over there. You can't see it. If we're, if we're farming the f the far east fields down there, you can actually see the Monsanto place. Um, but from here, you can't see it. There's one of the green towers. There is the wonderful little village of Wacoville over there in the corner. Uh, like I said, there's a pig farmer there. We do quite a bit of work with him. He buys wet corn from us for pig feed. Pretty good. All right, here's our GSI bins. That's where our soybeans go, right there. GSI bins. Um, most of the time when we harvest soybeans, they're dry enough. Everything condition-wise works out. We just put them in those. Uh, we don't have to run them through the bean dryer or anything. Uh, here's our new backco auger, or newer. Uh, we went away from the... That's how we went with the belt driven. That way, um, it was easier um, to drive over back when we had the belly dump um, trailer. But it still works really, really well. Really happy with it. That's what we use to fill these Brock bins and the GSI bin because the GSIs aren't attached to the leg. This, this big, beautiful setup here this is our sick up. These are our sukup bins, uh, primarily for corn. That's what mainly goes in here. It's all of our corn. A lot of it. 2,200 acres of crop. And uh, I'd say about 70 or 60% of it usually is in corn. Again, just depends on market prices. There's our GSI dryer. Which I have to buy them all the time. <laughs> Gets a little... Uh, a little rough on the legs. Yeah. It's that. Tell you what, what I'm gonna do is uh I got a little drone and I'll uh I'll cut away here and uh use the fancy drone and we'll fly around the farm. Show you what it looks like from the top. After that we'll step back and uh, chat with you a little bit more here on American Farmer. And uh see where the conversation goes. All right. that was my first time uh, flying the drone and recording so I, I hope you enjoyed it been practicing with it uh, it's really nice to have really nice for, for scouting fields and uh, things of that nature it's really nice to have the drone really happy with it take our last little walk around the yard I hope you've enjoyed this episode of American Farmer getting a not, not a whole lot of action going on on the farm today. It is, uh, we did get rained out, but it was really nice to uh, introduce myself, introduce the farm, show you the equipment, and what we'll be working with. Uh, American Farmer will be a weekly series, so stay tuned to WFRM. We will uh, 
release those once a week. Again, another big, huge thank you to our York County Growers Association, uh, which I am a member of. <laughs> but but thank you for uh, helping sponsor sponsor this uh, this episode today. I'll tell you what, let's take a look out here. Uh, let's see what, let's see how muddy it is still. Oh yeah. Yep, got quite a bit of mud here. Don't know if we're going to be able to get in the field today. If the clouds would break, we, we definitely would. But meantime, while we're here, let's play. <laughs> All right, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to American Farmer. I, I, I appreciate it. Don't be afraid to uh, to send a message to uh, WFRM. Let them know what you think about the new show. And uh, we'll see you next time on American Farmer.